I bet you think that meditation is sitting on a cushion or a chair or the floor with your legs crossed, hands on your knees, eyes closed, trying to get your brain to stop thinking, right? Well, if that's what you think meditation is, I got a surprise for you. It's not. So why don't we check out what meditation really is? Okay, I can't tell you how many times I have heard from people, don't tell me to meditate, I'm not going to do it, I can't do it, don't even bring it up, don't even, don't even just mention it, because I can't do it. <laughs> I've heard this a lot from clients, from TBI survivors, all sorts of people I've worked with, even my own mother, who have claimed over and over again they can't meditate, they're too hyper, they can't sit still. Here's the thing, you don't have to sit still. So everything I share here is from my experience, my teachings, and also from other experiences that I've heard with other survivors. I've helped over hundreds of TBI survivors move through their healing and get to a place where they feel like they're thriving again and not defined and limited by their injury. So let's jump in, let's talk about meditation. I know you see a ton of photos and I know you see a lot of pictures and it's always the same thing, right? The ohm, I know. But here's the funny thing. There's a thousand different ways you can meditate. That's right, you heard me correctly, a thousand. Probably even more than that. You don't have to meditate one way. Yes, there is the traditional sit on a cushion, meditate, for eight to 10 hours, I've done that. I went to a meditation retreat in Vermont. I didn't know that's what I was signing up for and we meditated like Buddhist monks do. So I know that experience. I did it day in and day out for seven days. Oh, and on top of that, we weren't allowed to speak when we weren't meditating. That's a topic for another video. Let's get back to here. I want to introduce you to meditation. You can walk and meditate. You can listen to sound and meditate. You can actually even play with your dog and meditate. Yep, you can. Meditation is simply observing your thoughts. You are never going to stop your brain from thinking. So this idea that you're going to meditate and stop all these thoughts from racing in your brain it's a myth. That's never going to happen. Your brain was built to, to communicate. It was built to observe and constantly feed you messages. So you're never going to turn that off, nor do we want to. But here's what meditation will do. The more you practice, the more you'll notice that your racing thoughts will slow down. You'll actually get less and less. And meditation becomes easier and easier. So I don't care what meditation you pick. I would start small something five minutes or less, especially if you've just had your brain injury, even a minute, right? We all deal with hearing issues. Some people can't listen. Some people can't watch. Sound, sound for me was a lot right, right out of the gate, especially since I lost half my hearing on my left ear. I could not deal with more than 15 minutes of stimulation right after my brain injury. So meditating for me, it would have to be a simple walk. So I started small. So if you can only meditate for a minute, do that, okay? And work up to five minutes, 10 minutes. This isn't a rush. Nobody is making sure that you're doing it. Nobody's on you like, oh my God, you only meditated for one minute. You'll still reap the benefits no matter what meditation you do or how long you do it. Consistency will be key here. If you can only meditate for a day this week, great. If you can only meditate for a day for a month, two months, great. But when you feel like you can move on and you can do two days a week, two days a month, then do that. Go at your journey. So here's the thing, how does meditation help? Really when you're meditating, what you're doing is observing your thoughts but not attaching to them. That's kind of like what we talked about in the mindfulness video. So if you haven't watched that video, I recommend going and checking it out because mindfulness and meditation work hand in hand. They can work separately, but they can also work hand in hand. Meditation is just allowing your thoughts to come in, noticing them, and letting them to leave. That's it. That's what meditation is. 
allowing yourself time within your body to sit and be and just allow. And the more you do this, the less you're going to see these thoughts race in. In fact, you're going to see them slow down more and more. You're going to notice other things around you. Maybe you'll hear something or you'll, you'll notice a scent that comes in, but it won't be your thoughts. And here's the other thing. You don't need a perfect place to meditate. You don't need to be in a quiet place with candles lit, you know, the perfect no noise, no kids screaming outside. I have to have it perfect because that kind of defeats the point of meditation. I remember a meditation teacher of mine telling me, you all should be able to meditate in the middle of Times Square. Here's the added bonus to meditation. What it also does is when you can meditate in such a chaotic area, when you can learn to calm your breath, calm your body, even when it wants to act up, you realize that everything in your daily life, things that would normally aggravate you, start to aggravate you less. You have more patience. You have more understanding of yourself. You have more forgiveness. Because you start to cultivate this peace within you and you realize, is this thing that's bothering me worth giving up my peace for? Yeah. For instance, I had to go to the doctors the other day to have an EKG. My heart was racing when I got in there, of course, and I know all the tools to do this. But when they did the EKG, the doctor came in and looked at me and she said, your resting heart rate, your heart rate got so, you got it so low, not bad low, just good low. She goes that I looked at the EKG and went, is this the same guy that just came in? And I just laughed and smiled and said, I know, because I knew to breathe and do a short meditation in the doctor's office without anybody knowing she was sticking the stickies on me, you know, and I was meditating. Didn't have my eyes closed, but I was capable of taking my body and understanding even though my body wanted to react. It wanted to be stressed. That wasn't going to help me, right? It wasn't going to help me heal. It wasn't going to help the test. It wasn't going to help me. So I needed it to come down. I needed to relax. I needed to be at peace and understand whatever is happening, it will be okay. We'll get through this. So that's just a quick example of something I've done with meditation. Hopefully this gives you a little insight. Now we could go much deeper into meditation. We could cover this topic and I probably will in later videos as we get more advanced in this channel. But for right now, I just wanna introduce you to it and get your mind thinking about, is this something I wanna try? A great app, and nobody sponsored this video, I'm not being paid to say this, um, that I use is Insight Timer. I also have some meditations on there, but that's not why I love it. I love it because there's such a variety on there. There's talks, there's courses, it's free. Yes, there's a paid version, but you get a lot with the free version. I didn't pay for it, and in fact, I still haven't paid for it. I've used everything on there. There's sound healing, there's um, mantras, there's affirmations, there's meditations, there's mindfulness guided imagery, there's all sorts of things on there. So I would say start there if you're interested and just plug it in and play and try. When I first started my injury, I couldn't listen to guided meditations, which are meditations that speak about like a garden or a beach area or a mountain. You know, they guide you or even guide you through your body to feel where your tension is. I couldn't do it. I needed just music. I needed maybe mantras even, or just soothing. I just needed something to soothe me while I laid there or sat for however long I wanted to do it. And of course, then I worked up to other things. So whatever works for you, whatever calls to you, if you try a meditation, you go, Ugh, I don't like this, turn it off. Try something else. That's a great thing with these apps especially Insight Timer. They've got a variety on there and I know you'll find something you love. If you have any questions, if you guys have any insight, you want any more resources, anything at all about meditation, drop me a comment below. I'll be sure to get back to you and help you as much as I can. If you found this video helpful, informative, if you'd give it a little thumbs up and like, I would greatly appreciate it. It helps me and it helps the channel grow. And also subscribe 
if you want to find more information like this and get notified when I release new videos. I appreciate you being here. I hope this helped and I'm sending you tons of hugs and healing on your healing journey.